the albatross around Volkswagen's neck, which we know and love as Dieselgate, certainly not flying away anytime soon. The latest uplifting development there is next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Even Volkswagens, just, hey, call me Mr. Inclusivity. Hit me up on the website. Not that. News out of Frankenfurter, Germany, where a court this week happily ruled that former Volkswagen CEO Martin Winterkorn will stand trial on fraud charges linked to the company's global emissions crimes, where it, you know, knowingly put profit ahead of human health and said, hey, love us anyway, which worked out so damn well for them. <laughs> I think you'd agree, at least through the prism of retrospectivity. Yes. To date, Volkswagen has paid more than 30 billion euros, which is about... Uh, 50 billion Schitzvillian, you know, micro pesos. That's a lot of hoot. In penalties and settlements for being such fine, outstanding citizens and paragons of corporate virtue, etc. They dropped their reputation in the sewer, essentially, as a consequence of these carefully taken decisions which were apparently approved at the highest level and which remains a real surprise and delight event for a reporter such as me. Imagine how close we'd be to having a Therapeutic Goods Administration approved zombie pandemic curing vaccine with that kind of spare cash to throw at it, like just saying. What can you not cure or solve for 30 billion euros? It is the universal panacea. Seemingly. Anyway, after five years of carefully thinking this through, a three judge panel in beautiful downtown Braunschweig in Volkswagen's neck of the woods, which would be Lower Saxony, ruled that car buyers suffered a financial loss when they bought a car without being aware that it was equipped with illegal software, which is such a paradox. It's not like they could have put, you know, quote, new Golf Diesel now with loss ensuring illegal code to pump up the toxicity <laughs> in the brochure, not even in the fine print. Epicurus could have had a field day with that, of course, except he's been dead inconveniently for the past 2,360-ish years. So there's that. The court in Bratwurst, or wherever, found a, quote, predominant likelihood of conviction in the fraud charge. It's the Germans, you know, they're quite precise like that. Look at how well they run their railways. It's amazing. They're really good at predicting the foreseeable future. Just saying. The three wise German judges said that four other defendants would also face trial on fraud charges connected to aggravated tax evasion and illegal advertising. Dates for the trial are yet to be set, but... Uh, <coughs> my <coughs> cock and I have never seen a five-way that we didn't really enjoy. But I have to say, we are really looking forward to this one. More than usual. They hate tax evasion, right? Courts, governments, whatever. They hate it. Just ask Wesley Snipes. They have no sense of humour whatsoever on this tax evasion stuff. To regulate us, you know, tax evasion is a worse crime than murder. Public trials are always quite fun too, which Big Marty's is apparently set to be. <laughs> There's really nothing a former corporate rock star loves more than having his dirty laundry oxygenated on the nightly news for Fritz and Helga to watch after their 12-hour shift at the local chicken processing plant. They dig that. Mr Wintercorn, whom I hasten to add is innocent until proven guilty, and he's been innocent in that way since he was indicted in Murka for similar alleged mongrel wrongdoings, 
actually conspiracy and wire fraud charges. He's been innocent of that since Thursday the 3rd of May 2018. That's a shitload of innocence in my view. Anyway, it looks like he'll be innocent of that until hell freezes over because Germany does not extradite its citizens to the USA no matter how innocent they continue to be in circumstances such as these. So that's quite lucky for Big Marty when you think about it. Anyway, the time duration of ongoing winter corn innocence could be somewhat shorter in Germany. He's full of cunning stunts, though, the old Marty, and he's probably still got a few moves up his sleeve, and he's certainly been quite agile in the past, despite being a septuagenarian today. My favourite Marty does Cirque du Soleil moment was when he parachuted so adroitly out of the top job at Volkswagen just days after the US EPA announced a notice of violation on September the 18th of 2015. It did look bad, I have to say, and if optics mattered, it did not look coincidental to me or like something a squeaky clean dude would do. And of course, optics are not everything and they're certainly not conclusive. Sherman courts are actually just now making the move on Big Marty on pretty much the fifth anniversary of Dieselgate. I do hope there's a cake. What is the fifth anniversary traditionally? I forget. Is it puke or dog shit? It should be dog shit, perhaps. The company had, of course, for years been using illegal software that recognised when vehicles were on a test rig and turned the emissions controls on and then turned the emissions controls off during normal driving. Well done, you assholes. So Dieselgate is technically a little bit older than five. In fact, it's probably up for wearing long pants sometime soon. As a result, of course, the cars emitted far more than the legal limit for oxides of nitrogen, which are a class of pollutants that kill people prematurely, and it also dicks with their quality of life before they shuffle off. But it did make Volkswagen a shit ton of money, and that's the main thing, I suppose, until they were discovered at the buffet after lights out with no friggin' pants on. And then it got expensive. I mean, doesn't it always? Am I right? We've all been there. The three wise Bratwurstian judges bounced back some allegations levelled by prosecutors when they first charged Mr Wintercorn back in April of 2019. They said in a news release that the court did not approve charges of unfair competition relating to the vehicle's advertising in the United States. The court also rejected prosecutors' claims that defendants should repay their bonuses, saying the company, and not the bigwigs, was the financial beneficiary of emissions misconduct. That is certainly a cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> I think you'd agree. Like most of the corporate bigwigs I know would rather be waterboarded until the heat death of the friggin' universe rather than hand back their own cash. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> My fine feathered friend and I are certainly looking forward to the upcoming trial. We think it'll be certain to be more entertaining and, in his case, more uplifting than zombie pandemic lockdown. But then, isn't everything? The chicks just will not leave him alone. It was fine for the first few weeks, but ultimately, I guess, everything just gets old. We're both quite keen to see Big Marty back in the spotlight. Yes, we are. We certainly missed him. And one can only hope the trial will last for months. And now this from you, because I love interacting with you in a completely hetero way. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Fake set with shit tools in a fake studio and you're an auto expert? You're full of bullshit, but please use my referral link on new cars. LOL! Fake as shit! Mark Williams. Dude, you say that like it's a bad thing. Didn't say much about the car, but good video. I didn't expect to like your politics, 
But there's another surprise. That comment from John Duggan was about my recent Kona Electric report. And I'm glad you enjoyed it, John. Thanks for watching, dude. My politics is fairly easy to summarize because on my world, politicians are generally incompetent, self-serving, talentless, former lawyer dicks, regardless of which side of the house they're actually sitting on. And frankly, they seem to be getting worse. If we had Kylie friggin' Minogue as the Prime Minister, management of the country would not possibly be worse. And who knows, maybe we do need everyone to be doing a brand new dance now. His accent is so thick that my glass of water turned into a pint of Guinness. Oh, frigging contraire. Not the accent. I'd suggest it was probably Jesus answering your prayer. After all, when it comes to that kind of conversion, he's got form. Being an expert in cars, are you an automotive engineer, mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, or something in the physics field, or work in an automotive R&D lab? If so, then great, you could be an expert. If not, well, then you're a car enthusiast with many opinions. Many people are hard at work all around the world developing technologies that are going to help you change some of your opinions. These people are engineers, scientists, inventors, or in a word, experts. They make the things you drive. The EV revolution takes time because it's advanced technology. Doesn't happen quickly, but it's happening now. I would respectfully retort that it takes but a few seconds to Google me, dude. I have a degree in engineering, so there's that. Well done there. Pro tip, quote, an engineer or something in the physics field. End quote. Show me the friggin' engineering that's outside the quote unquote physics field, dude. EVs and advanced technology now, like EVs have the same kinds of batteries as power tools and laptops and phones and tablets, and they use electric motors, which if memory serve, have been around for quite some time now, and regenerative braking, kinda like trains. So which bit of that exactly is advanced? <coughs> Shit. Most of the emphasis, as I can see it, is taking place in the next generation of EV-specific platform development, just so they won't be as dynamically compromised as the current ones rolling around, which are largely based on combustion engine designs. Any allegation that EVs are in some way terribly sophisticated in terms of the technology is completely disconnected from reality. Even hydrogen fuel cell EVs, the FC EVs that are just coming on now, that technology has been around since before Apollo. The Apollo spacecraft used a fuel cell to produce electricity for the flight to the moon and back, and when that oxygen tank exploded on Apollo 13 so memorably, it was there to power up the fuel cell to provide the electricity. Are they busily optimising the design of EVs and trying to cope with the inherent energy density limitations of batteries? Like, yeah, sure. But you have to face facts, right? Combustion engine cars are more technically advanced than EVs because they are more complex. These are called facts, of course, and the cool thing about facts is you really don't have to like them. Also, EVs will not kill internal combustion. That's just a fantasy. It's just going to be an alternative choice, like getting another dish added to an existing menu. People are going to continue to order the chicken because it's a conservative choice, dude. The advent of EVs does not herald the demise of internal combustion, at least not for decades to come. It's really only nutbag EV evangelists who think that, paid up Tesla cult members and people of that nature who want the future to be a particular way. It's like cognitive dissonance. I'm really looking forward to your comments on that one, you know, particularly if you're an EV evangelizing nutbag flat earther or anti-vaxxer. Don't hold back. I can't wait. For everyone else, of course, thank you very much for watching. 